Uh, good evening, uh, Mac 2320 classmates. Uh, this is a continuation of the shunt connected DC motor, and uh, I'm going to give a refresher of the diagram of such a motor. And what I really want to talk about is uh, the reading or the interpretation of the nameplate of a shunt connected motor. Uh, now what I have here is I have a diagram, electrical diagram, that is rather simple. Uh, now right right now I just picked a diagram at random. This is not this is not the diagram that directly pertains or relates to the nameplate we're going to be talking about, but it'll get us started. So what we have DC motor. I've got my shunt circuit right here. And this is the coil, the field shunt, I'm sorry, the field winding, winding of this, uh, this motor. Uh, on this side, I have the armature circuit. I have the armature itself with its brushes, the resistance of the wire, and we can include the resistance of the brushes, which will be normally a couple of ohms each. Uh, the power supply adjustable, 0 to 495 volts, okay. 29.9 amps maximum for the armature. This is what this looks like. Okay, the motor looks like this. The nameplate will talk about the voltage of the armature, the amperage of the armature. It will talk about uh, the voltage of the shunt circuit. It will talk about the maximum amperage of the shunt circuit. Uh, notice that in the case of, of motors, uh, we very often refer to the both parameters, voltage and current, of either one of these circuits as excitation. Okay, we like to say, or we used to say in the olden days, that we would excite the field circuit, or we would excite the armature circuit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's okay with me if we want to talk that way, and that's uh, no harm done, and it gives us a little bit of history. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is the nameplate from a U.S. Electrical Motors motor. Okay, as you can read for yourself, it is a direct current motor. Uh, but there's some things I want you to, to make notes about. Usually the first thing we look at when we look at the nameplate for a motor is this thing right here. Horsepower. What you need to commit to memory is when you see horsepower on a motor nameplate, that is the output horsepower or the horsepower that the shaft can uh, put out, okay? Uh, I do believe that sometimes it's called brake horsepower. So in the case of our motor, this motor is capable of delivering 150 horsepower to its mechanical load. If I look over to the right here, just step over one time, uh, RPM, uh, revolutions per minute, I've got two values, 1150 slash 2000. Uh, we're going to talk about 1150 RPM. That is the normal maximum speed for this DC motor. The 2000 RPM uh, we'll talk about uh, toward the end of this, uh, this lecture. Uh, but just remember that right now our output horsepower is 150 horsepower. The RPMs maximum, okay, is 1,150 RPMs. And remember that uh, for a shunt connected motor, that the maximum speed of the motor is proportional, or the, the speed of the motor is proportional to the voltage applied to the armature. So. 
1,150 RPM, that's the maximum normal speed, occurs when we have an armature voltage of 550 volts for this motor. Now then, right here, right next to it is, I see an amperage of 226 amps, okay? That is the maximum allowable amperage to the armature, no matter how it's wound, no matter how it's connected. So, for this motor delivering 150 horsepower, we will have 1,150 RPM when I have 550 volts delivered or applied to the armature and the maximum allowable current that I can have at any time is 226 amps. I'm not going to talk about the frame. I'm not going to talk about what uh, stationary B means uh, for the winding. Uh, the enclosure, I mean, this motor can come in a variety of enclosures. It happens to be DP drip proof. Uh, we won't worry about that right now. Uh, we will say that continuous duty uh, means that this motor is meant to run in, in a stable mode. Uh, you, you, you can change the speeds, but it is designed to operate continuously around the clock. Not meant for a lot of uh, irregular or uh, interruptible or uh, inconsistent starts and stops. It's meant for continuous duty. Not going to talk about the installation class nor the power supply code. Uh, connection diagram, you will need the manufacturer's manual to interpret that. I'm not going to worry about the bearings. Okay. So, all of this information that we did cover, such as uh, horsepower, right? And that's the, that's the horsepower that this motor can deliver to its mechanical load. We talked about RPMs. We talked about armature volts, armature amperage. Uh, what we did not talk about was the fields. Okay, now then, this, uh, this motor is able to handle uh, two different voltages for the field windings. So if we go down here, I've got two diagrams here and here. Okay, and if you read it, you'll say it is to show you how many volts you can use and how to use it for the field power supply, both cases field power supply. So, uh, if, if, I've, if I've got a plant distribution system which is, has given me uh, typical of a pair of transformers, let's say 240 volts versus 120 volts, depending upon how I configure them, uh, this is the configuration for what we call the higher voltage, 240 volts. This is the schematic that shows the configuration of the field for 120 volts. Notice that at 240 volts, uh, there's a pair of windings in the field which you connect in series. You connect them in series for operating with a higher voltage. If I want to operate at 120 volts, I put the two windings in parallel. It also shows, it shows the armature with the armature wires A1 and A2 sitting right down here. If you notice it has the symbol that we're used to which is the armature itself. Uh, and I'm not sure of what the coil is. I don't know if that's a series coil or meant to depict the winding uh, for the armature itself. And over here I have the same drawing again. It, uh, the armature is not affected uh, by my choice of field winding voltage. So, important things, horsepower, RPM, and the lower RPM of the two that are shown here, 
I'm not going to talk about the 2000 at this time. Uh, 150 horsepower, 1150 RPM, 550 volts maximum to the armature, 226 amps maximum to the armature. Okay, and then I have my field winding choices down here. I can operate this motor or I can connect this motor uh, for a field voltage of 240 volts or for a field voltage of 120 volts.